Good evening. It's 6 o'clock on Monday, February 27, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. Prime Minister Eddie Rama was in Elbasan today at the university where he addressed university students. The Prime Minister issued strong accusations against the justice system, declaring that it is being led by criminals. And it is for this reason, the Prime Minister declared, that establishing the vetting commissions is an immediate need. Speaking before the students, the Prime Minister called the judicial reform the pole star, saying, the judicial reform is the top of the reforms. The power of the judicial system is currently in the hands of criminals, and therefore the judicial reform must be implemented as soon as possible. There are many cases when people who have been arrested by police for murder, rape, and violent robbery have been set free in the courts. These people then commit crimes again. Corrupt judges have become co-authors for these crimes. Therefore, reforming the judiciary is at the top of our reforms agenda. It is our pole star for orienting our state-building efforts. This reform is the backbone of a solid justice system. This reform should move forward, said the Prime Minister, calling on the opposition to return to Parliament and vote for the establishing of the vetting institutions, and then after it can continue with its protest. It is time for the opposition to demonstrate that it is not a shield to protect the courts which have been invaded by criminals, he said, adding that it is the opposition's right to protest, but not in this decisive moment for the country's future. The prime minister compared the opposition's protest with the protest in Romania, declaring that the opposition is protesting for completely different reasons than those in Romania. The Prime Minister also contrasted this protest with that of the Socialist Party's protest when the Socialists were the opposition, declaring that the Socialists differed that they did not leave the table to escape from discussions. In 2009, the Socialist Party boycotted Parliament as a sign of protest against the elections, asking for ballots to be opened and the counting of votes for the areas where the Socialist Party claimed to have been manipulated. Today's Central Election Commission meeting was scheduled to make a final decision regarding the mandate of Lasia Socialist MP Armando Prenga. However, the Commission dismissed the case of the MP for whom the prosecution accused of violating the decriminalization law and had asked for his mandate's termination. The Central Election Commission closed the case because MP Prenga presented his resignation to the Assembly on Saturday, February 25th. In a letter sent to the Assembly Speaker, MP Prenga clarified that he did not resign because of the decriminalization law, but rather to guarantee tranquility for himself and his family. I am resigning even though I am not affected by the decriminalization law. The law does not predict removing my mandate for a fine. For my and my family's tranquility, I resign from my mandate. The opposition's accusations are slander against me, reads the letter. The MP's defense lawyer said that the pressure made the MP resign and stated that the Kurbin court decision for which Prenga is accused of is related to a fine and therefore not subject to the decriminalization law. With the socialist MP's resignation, the Socialist Movement for Integration MP, who is next on the list of MPs for the area, will replace him. After only one day, the letter the Minister of Justice sent to the U.S. and E.U. ambassadors was publicized. Today, the minister said that the concerns he raised for the international monitoring operation are fixable. In the letter dated February 20th, for the second time, the minister raised the concern that the international monitoring operation may be unconstitutional. The minister directly attacked the Prime Minister's Secretary General, claiming that the role of the Secretary for the Council of Ministers is unconstitutional. I have raised some issues which I believe are completely fixable and clarify the process by setting clear rules for communication between the international monitoring operation with the Albanian institutions. This is what the letter brings to attention and then the reflections do not come by me. I have the obligation to point out the issues I notice, declared the Minister of Justice. Last week, the Minister of Justice held a work lunch with the EU and U.S. ambassadors where the issue is learned to have been discussed. 
According to the agreement, the ambassadors will have a managing role in the International Monitoring Operation Boards. The Minister of Interior, Saimir Tahiri, along with many citizens, signed the petition to implement the judicial reform. After signing the petition, the minister said that 98% of Albanian citizens want the vetting and the judicial reform and made an, ap an appeal to the citizens to sign the petition regardless of their political views. According to the minister, implementing the reform is not a matter of party, but an issue that separates the future from the past. To us, it is very important to clarify for the public that there are two groups, those who want to keep justice hostage and those who want free justice, where we can make decisions based on the law and the rights, declared Minister Tahiri. The minister was asked about the lawsuit the state police have filed with the prosecution against the DP chairman, and he replied that the institutions are doing their job. I do not have any comment on this issue. All institutions are doing their duty. I do not understand the aggressive and arrogant statements of the DP chairman, whom I would not even like to have as a neighbor, added the minister. Oran News asked citizens about the vetting, and they said that its implementation will bring big changes. Citizens are signing the petition to begin implementing the vetting law, as the opposition is still boycotting parliament and thereby the procedures to establish the commissions that will vet the judges and prosecutors. Today is the 10th day of the opposition's protest, and the DP chairman spoke with the former politically persecuted and their family members, where he declared that freedom is being threatened by the dictatorship of crime and drugs. The DP chairman also declared that the former persecuted have been abandoned and promised that he will bring attention back to these people, saying, the freedom for which we fought 26 years ago is being threatened by the dictatorship of crime. Today, freedom is being threatened by a prime minister who violates the constitution to defend criminals. Rama refuses to implement the decriminalization law. We are here to say to Rama that the only way to return normalcy to the country is his removal and a provisional government. There is no other choice, said the DP chairman, adding that the Democratic Party's resistance is increasing every day and that migrants are also joining the protest. Protesters raised a drone over the Prime Minister's office with a banner reading, Free Elections Without Drugs and the Drugged. They also brought flour to the area of the protesters' tent as a symbol of drugs. 